So yeah, my name is Manuel Chupitikover. Uh, I am part of the Imports Technical Advice Panel with under Mark Donegan. So we made a presentation to explain how we how we do it in the plant health side, how to regulate imports, and a little bit about the risk categorization of different plants and plant parts and the frequency we have the on checks. So uh, I would go through the presentation. If you have any questions, uh, please let me know at the begin at the end of the presentation. If I can answer them, I will take them away and go back with a more formal uh, answer. So my, so I, I will cover this. Uh, so what we are, uh, the requirements on imports, where we do the inspections, the different risks, and uh, how how we look for new potential risk and the future risk categorization with the top model. I think it's something similar on the animal side. So first of all, uh, this there is the risk, the the always the threat of different plant pests and disease. And, uh, I mean, with insects, nematodes, different bacteria, uh, fungi, or or viruses, then could be a a real threat uh, uh, and harm the environment. Uh, it can have a social impact or economical impact. So, Tefra set policies uh, to enforce the control of resistant imports and by regulating certain plant and, and plant products. So as part of the PHSI, uh, Plant Health Seed Inspectorate, we enforce these regulations to ensure that the country is free, uh, England and Wales is free from pest, uh, quarantine plant pest and disease. Mm -hmm. uh, so, for importing plants, uh, with plants I mean seeds, roots, vegetables, uh, living plants, uh, it's required for, for most of them. It's required a phytosanitary certificate that is a plant health document uh, from the that must be issued for the exporting country that declares that it's free from uh, plant pest and disease. But also we will do checks to ensure that that is compliant. And so that is for some commodities, uh, plants and plant products is required pre notification through one of our plant health systems. And we will do the checks on documents. Uh, we will do a check on uh, identity and we will do physical check. Uh, depending from the from the commodity, we do a different check. Uh, so when a commodity or when a consignment is declared through one of our systems. The way we do it is uh, part of the team will do uh, dog checks, check that the phytosanitary uh, document is, uh, contains all the information that was declared, check that is correct. Uh, we do uh, uh, ID check, checking that what is has been declared is what we were expecting. And then a physical check check that is free from plant pests and disease. Um, if that is not compliant, it fail one of these checks and doesn't pass the inspection, uh, we might destroy the consignment or we ask to re-export it to the country of origin. So how we regulate the import from the rest of the world. So different commodities, uh, different plant and plant products at different risk ratings at the moment. So this is what is currently. So we have the regulated and notifiable. So that means require the phytosanitary certificate and at the same time need to notify to be notified through one of our systems. Then is regulated. This is the rest of the commodities. And regulated means it requires the phytosanitary certificate, but it doesn't need to be declared and this is a problem of resources, so normally we don't check for them. And then unregulated can be brought into the UK with a, a phytosanitary certificate or notification. Uh, there are only a few commodities that they are very low risk, and we don't normally check. 
So in the EU after Brexit uh, uh, has been slightly different. We have a high priority list published on the plant health portal with some high risk commodities, which include plants for planting, uh, some potatoes, some seeds and farm machinery that required the same phytosanitary certificate, pre-notification and physical check. And as a temporary measure, measure with the lorries coming into the country, we have implemented the pot scheme point of destination where commodities come with a lorry. Uh, those get checked and physical, uh, I mean, documents get checked. Then arrive to a nursery, so there are many registered pots in the country. And is where we inspect them. But th that also brought some challenges. For example, some lorries going to different pots. And here is where we have the plant passporting to move plants in between different pots. Uh, there are many different scenarios and it has been uh, a challenge sometimes. In theory, they need to come through uh, one of these PCPs, a sport control post, and then we have control post as well. There are normally ports in the coast. Excuse me. <laughs> and uh, some airports as well and um, yep yeah, so uh, how, how do we know what need to be inspected so we have uh once it's notified in one of these our plant health systems <coughs> we have some we have the risk engine in the background uh that is a system that selects different commodities for different uh, inspection rates depending of, on the commodity. Uh, sorry, I might throw this a little bit dry. Yeah, so that means in, in the background, it has been assessed that woody plants, for example, trees, have a higher risk compared with uh, non-woody plants, so some shrubs or indoor plants. So the, the risk engine will do that automatically and select a, for every 100 applications, only 30% uh, will be selected or 5% will be selected for inspection. Potatoes are also high risk, especially if there are for, for planting seed potatoes, while uh, a vaccine are blueberries, inspection rates are lower. It's the same with where potatoes, depending from the countries, it, everything has been risk assessed pr previously. So that need to be in it's implemented in the system. And inspector don't over inspect what is not a uh, high risk. So as I mentioned, we have these regulated commodities that don't require any notification. And this is the majority of the commodities, but this is always the risk that something uh, uh, harmful organism is coming in one of them. So this is why in different BCPs there are different inspectors trying to chase and, and track some commodities that might contain this plant pest and disease to collect information from from them, and we might uh, or they might find new harmful organism coming through different unexpected routes. So all this information goes through the import threat and horizon scheme team and they will do some risk evaluation on this new plant pest and disease or new routes or new commodities that might uh, get inspected in the future to prevent the arrival of new uh, harmful organism. So this is what normally inspectors see in the in the warehouse. So it's it's not easy just to select one box and find something. Um, the most of them are lower risk. So in, inspectors need to uh, plan the inspections before going for for targeting new commodities. 
that might be that might contain pl planned uh, best indices. So yeah, sometimes to look for the specific genus, for example, in roots is less likely. Maybe leafy vegetables are more likely to get uh, plant pests and disease, so they need to target them. So this is the, the checks they inspectors can do to do this surveillance to find new plant pests and disease on commodities. They check previous interceptions uh, where has something found before. Then they try to target those uh, commodities where it's more likely to find something. They can uh, well, more more uh, about the same uh, targeting a specific commodities, or um, they can also check the measures taken on the country for origin. That means uh, if the, for example, produce it has been packed and cleaned, it is likely to contain something. While well, if it has just collected from the field and put it in a box, more likely to have a pest. So how, how inspectors to ensure that uh, uh, consumption is free from plant uh, pest and disease. And uh, when they do the inspection, so they inspect lots. Uh, that means there are clear instructions how many boxes uh, uh, need to be inspected and how many items. So for example, for produce or for fruits, we'll be inspecting 60 fruits from five boxes. And in theory, that should mean this a 95% of probability that there are not any pests on that consignment. So the inspectors are trained and they have experience on it, so they they would know more or less by looking at this amount of commodities if it's if there are, if it's likely to have pests or not. So this is the equipment for inspection from the inspections. I mean, in what the inspectors are using, so a magnifier lens to identify if, uh, small insects, try to identify them on the field. But if they find anything, they will send it to a uh, uh, to a lab. Yes, for to confirm that is the quarantine pest or if that is a threat or not. And a knife to cut through. So when they examine fruits, sometimes they see holes where it's they suspect there are caterpillars inside that might be a quarantine plant pest and disease. And so they can cut through the, through the vegetables, clubs to uh, protect themselves from what is in the commodity, a torch, um, and in the bottles where they, uh, how, is how they send the plant, the intercepted pest to the lab. So the, the way they do the inspection is visual inspection. Uh, so they check the commodity, they check the fruit, the plant, or the leaves to see everything is right. Is it any soil? Soil might have nematodes. Uh, they check different parts of the plants. Uh, for example, uh, if they know the, the biology of the insect, they might check leaves. Is it the underneath of the leaves? Is it the other side? Uh, nematodes on the root, on the root. So, or oop, they check for symptoms. Uh, roots, so you can see if they are clean, or you see holes. You see what might be a rust, uh, a fungi, uh, virus patterns. Everything that is not right uh, might be suspicious. Um, yeah, moving to the Tom B Tom model. Um, you probably are aware about it from the animal side, but this will uh, so it's the target operator model is how the inspections uh, will change for us. Uh, it will be a new high risk, uh, well, a risk classification having the high risk goods that will need to be inspected from five to hundred. And everything that was coming through the pots with all the challenges uh, that were there now will be going forward to the uh, BCPs, to the uh, ports and airports. Uh, so, a, a proof site for it uh, that will probably cause other challenges. Uh, but uh, 
Yeah, so that is expected for April and might be suspected uh, that maybe changes after. Then we have the medium risk goods. Um, so it's sim similar to the uh, well, it's similar to the high risk rules, but they will be inspected in a lower frequency and the yeah, changes are expected for the uh, January on, on April. And then low risk goods, probably the, the amount of low risk goods will increase and they won't require any any pre-notification or phytosanitary certificate. Um, this is just uh, to show you some stats. Uh, I don't know how I'm going on time, but yeah, yeah, just to show you some uh, interceptions. I don't know how familiar are you with this uh, insects or plant plant pest pest, uh, plant pest and disease. So Bemisia tabaki is a white fly. It's uh, the most the, the one what see most, and you can see it's over 300 in in the last 12 months. So we find it daily. This is a white fly that might spread viruses. And then we have another uh, leaf miner uh, fly, Pyromyza, uh, another small insect. And yeah, most of them are insect and then some uh, fungi and, and bacteria uh, and some viruses and in smaller amounts. Uh, so where where I've been intercepted or, or seen them is normally basil. I think that is more produce. Um, solanum and capsicum and mandevilla that include plants for planting uh, or some produce as well. Uh, chilies. And from which countries are these coming? Uh, from the most of them from the Netherlands. Uh, there have been a, a lot of interception from the Netherlands. And um, I'm from Thailand as well. And then uh, the next uh, countries were a bit more, but you can see almost 200 from the Netherlands. Uh, you can see it in a map here. What is produce? Where we found uh, pests on produce and where we found the pest on plants for planting. So more, uh, plants for planting mainly from Europe and on produce uh, for the rest of the world. I think that has to do with the regulations as well, because some plants for planting are prohibited from from the rest of the world. And here on, on commodity, so we see on Basil. Uh, produce especially and this is Bemisia tabaki is the wild fly again and a lot of interceptions of oh, on plants for planting of uh, that is probably from the from the Netherlands as well <laughs> uh, yeah and here there are the stats which ones are plants for planting uh, more than from produce <laughs> Um, so this is the seasonality. So some data about when has been intercepted. Um, you can see it's um, yeah, could be various reasons why is this seasonality. But you can see plants for planting on produce, mainly from Europe, is probably when they are coming from the Netherlands in, in mainly in summer. Uh, produce is pretty much stable. So the the whole year. Um, yeah. So thank you. I have. I hope I have covered everything, uh, or I must I might have been too quickly through it. But if you have any questions, uh, yeah, happy to answer them. <laughs>